everyone, it's Dr. DeCubles from This Must Be The Place. Today I am joined with the guys from Gold Shield Services and I wanted to have them by because what they do is a little bit unique and I wanted to have them explain it to you. But first, help me welcome them. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Thank you so much. Thank I'm you. Derek with Gold Shield Services, obviously. I'm the CFO, one of the co-owners. Um, I'm Mike with um, Gold Shield Plumbing Division. Um, I'm the owner of the plumbing division. Nice. Now. That's the first thing where I want to start is with the plumbing division, because when we say plumbing, it's kind of a general term, and a lot of people might not understand what plumbing really entails and what it is that you guys do. So what does plumbing mean? Plumbing means um, anything that is delivering your water or getting, removing your waste from your house. So we cover anything from that drippy faucet to that line that's re leaving your house or the water line that goes to your house. And plumbing is pretty important then because everyone has to be able to get the water, it has to be able to take showers and all of that. So it uh, makes sense. So tell me a little bit about um, you know when you kind of came to this area and tell me just a little bit about uh, Gold Shield Services in general. Sure. So uh, I personally been around Downers Grove since 88 uh, is when my grandma moved into Downers Grove here. Nice. Um, I, have a, I have a lot of um, fond memories of Downers. Uh, the last eight years I've actually been running a other another plumbing company that was in Downers Grove um, that um, I recently left and have started the division here so nice nice now tell me a little bit general about Gold Shield Services how long have you been around so Gold Shield Services has been around for all over 14 and a half years we provide uh, heating and cooling electrical and now offering plumbing services um, as well as indoor air quality and smart home integration uh, the plumbing division is going to be mostly focused in this area in the Downers Grove uh, section uh, just because we don't have the text down here yet um, in the HVAC or electrical side. The HVAC and electrical side is mostly in the Algonquin area. So we have two locations, one in Algonquin and one here that we just opened up um, in Downers Grove area, which is awesome. It started off as a really small one truck company um, with um, Art, my business partner. Uh, he is an electrician, he's a master electrician um, and grew it. and added an HVAC division into that as well and uh, we have blown up since then in Algonquin area and uh, couldn't pass up an opportunity to bring Mike on and, and his guys because it's it's amazing. The stuff that he does falls into our core values of our company very, very uh, much and our customer focus is, is exactly in line with what he is too. So it was just a perfect match from the day we met each other. So. Yes. <laughs> nice. Well, that always makes things easier. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So let me ask you this, when we start talking about kind of plumbing and the uh, services that you offer, is there any time of year that is busier than another where people need more issues or things just happen to come up? Yes. My favorite time of year actually is when it's raining and your <laughs> sump pump in your basement um, or you have a lot of water intrusion. I'm, I'm great at finding solutions for um, reoccurring flooding issues in people's basements. Okay. So, and then probably not even just with the rain, but also when we get those big snowfalls and all of a sudden it just melts. Yep, yep, that would be in there. And then the freezing time too. When it's deep freeze, polar vortex came down, we're negative 40 degrees here, we're, yeah. we're, we're busy. <laughs> Fun times in Chicagoland. Yes, it is. <laughs> so let me ask you this then, uh, being with that, uh, is there anything that a, you have just seen that you never thought you would see on a service call, someone calls you up and says something, don't give you a great explanation, you get out there and you're like, wow, I wasn't expecting that. Oh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, I don't know if I have a really good one. Uh, yeah, it, uh, over exaggeration of how much water is in a basement is a, a pretty common one that you run across. Um, but some sewage problems in a basement full of sewage is probably the most um, surprising thing I've run into where the sewage was all the way to the rafters of their basement. Wow, so that's not really even just a sump pump issue, right? That's... That is um, a main water or main sewer issue. Wow. Now, let me ask you that when we talk about kind of like with sewage backing up and stuff is who would be more at risk? Someone who is, let's say, who is uh, uh, unincorporated and has their own like tank in the yard or someone who's part of the city. Is there equal risk, more risk? Like what have, what have you found? There, if you're on a septic or on the sewer, um, the potential is um, about the same. Okay. You can have a worse situation in a city connection because you yeah. can have a lot more water coming to you than what you're just creating in your house to oh, be able to back up. I see. So that's not ideal. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I, like, I like the idea of septic and well systems. It, 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 
that's where I started off was out in the country. I did a lot of a lot of stuff back in the day when I first started on well and septic. And you're your own municipality at that point. So it's really nice you can control everything. When you're uh, attached to the city, the city has a lot more, you know, All what's right. going on because they're the ones that are maintaining your the main lines out in the streets and stuff like that. Okay, and that Downers Grove sense. is really nice too because they actually take care of all the way up to your foundation wall here in Downers Grove, which is oh, a nice. nice program that they have. So. so let me ask you this then. When we talk about um, like plumbing issues and things that people can run into, is there anything that you have been able to see in your experience or kind of like maybe some warning signs that if people see this, it's probably better to call you sooner rather than later before it becomes a bigger issue? Is there any like a telltale sign that people can look for to know that hey, this is something that needs to be taken care of? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, I would definitely say like water around the water heater, if you haven't had your pumps checked, I really strongly believe in maintenance and having a licensed professional come in and check everything in your house once a year, exercising your emergency shutoff valves because if that's not working, you can have a major flooding issue. Uh, making sure your water heater's um, drained and tuned up. If you got an endless water heater, that those need to be cleaned on an annual basis. Um, so just general maintenance and having a professional or having a relationship with that professional to go in. And of course, we'd love it to be us, um, but to go in and be able to check everything out. We do a program where it's pass, fail, or watch, and as we go through everything in your house, and that's really for your knowledge and to catch those preventative to prevent those problems to become bigger. That makes sense. Now, um, with with on that kind of topic too, um, you know, one thing that we've noticed uh, has been in the news a lot is people, you know, like buying and selling houses and houses going for more money and all this stuff with the real estate market. So with that being said, let's say someone is looking to buy a house. <laughs> is there anything that um, like they, I would assume that they really should have it checked out by like a professional because Otherwise, they could be looking at quite a bit more money, correct? Like, what are some things that you would check if someone says, hey, I'm looking at purchasing this house. Can you see if it's the plumbing's up to snuff? Uh, anything that's exposed is good. Putting cameras in the line is really good. So making sure that that most expensive line is your water and sewer coming into your house. That's probably the biggest investment you would make into a house. So making sure that that sewer line is clear and good all the way out to the main. Uh, because that could be twenty, thirty thousand dollars to repair that. Once again, Downers Grove, in Downers Grove Sanitation District, they do have that program that they do take care of that. So, people right in town here are good, but anybody else outside the main part of Downers Grove um, should have that looked at. The big thing with buying and selling homes, especially when you're buying a home, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of stress involved in that, especially during right now, because. People are overbidding, there's a bid war, there's 25 different offers that are out there, there's cash offers, and I can't tell you the amount of times that we walk in as electricians or HVAC or plumbing that they just, either they waive their right for a, um, an inspection, oh, yeah. or they go and get an inspector in there, but the inspector is a carpenter, and a carpenter is not an electrician, they might have done some electrical in their life, like a couple outlets and stuff like that, but your panel is one of the most expensive things in your home. Your HVAC system is another expensive thing in your home. The plumbing sewer lines are gonna be another expensive thing in your home. Why would you not wanna invest in the correct trade that does this every single day to watch out and know? Whether it's good or bad will save you thousands of dollars. And I don't mean little thousands, I mean big thousands of dollars. There's been so many times that this past two years with all this real estate stuff, we've rewired homes in the tune of $50,000 after they've just dumped a whole bunch of money into buying the home and they get Ouch. in there and there's cloth wiring in there, there's not proper groundage for um, safety components of the electrical system. The HVAC has completely been just thrown in like, oh, it says it has a new HVAC system. Well, <laughs> hang on a second, it's not it's not installed correctly. It's, under, it's oversized or undersized, so now the house feels hot and uncomfortable and then you have a significant other that's really not comfortable with being in the home, which then creates stress inside of you know the marriage or the relationship. And then at the end of the day, that kind of falls into, we get that phone call. I hate getting those phone calls. It's really hot in here, it's uncomfortable. We just bought this home. Did you have anybody take a look at it? We had an inspector and then the inspector is not liable for it because they said that the HVAC needs to be checked by a professional. They just didn't verbally tell you that. They just wrote it in the contract. Oh, so it becomes this back and forth. And unfortunately we get stuck in the middle of it. And it's not good for us either because I don't I don't want to come in your house and be like, hey, here's a really big bill. I, I want to come in and 
do all the preventative stuff. I, I want to catch it before it becomes an issue. I think we saved five home purchases that would have been in, in the hundreds of thousands to fix and repair oh, wow. foundational stuff that was missed. Um, and that's just because our guys know what to look for in homes in a different way that a homeowner does. Like, you know, Susie or you know, John, homeowner or whoever, doesn't know how an HVAC system is supposed to work, if it's properly sized, if the duct works correct, how the electrical system is wired out. We ran into panels this year that were upgraded to 200 amps, but the lines going into the panel were still 100 amp. So, and they just <laughs> fried the panel, and it's like, well, we put a new panel in it. Yeah, but like, it's not, it's like putting uh, monster truck tires on a, a smart car. Like, it, <laughs> okay, it, it's great, it's kind of cool, it's weird, you know, but like, it's not gonna work, you know what I mean? Um, so those are, Part of the stuff that we like to do is educate. You can you can go with us or you don't have to go with us, but at the end of the day, you're going to get the right information from us and the right knowledge that goes behind with the level of experience that we offer on the table, and that's across all divisions, which is great. So yeah, yeah, and you you brought up a really good point too because the other thing that people have to know is when they're buying that house, there is no insurance that's going to cover after they purchased it because their time to look was before that they signed on that dotted line. So they're, are, they're gonna have to pay out of pocket for whatever it is if it's missed. So protect, one of, that's the biggest purchase most people are ever gonna make as a home. So you wanna make sure that you're putting your money into something that is what you think it is and not a huge lemon or a money pit. Yeah. I would agree with that. And definitely if you have a home inspector that's coming in, get the trades in there too. We do have, work with a couple home inspectors that actually call us up to get us out there also. So, I mean, it's not expensive for us either. We, we, it's very inexpensive actually for us to come in and we, you're putting it on our insurance then. And we're liable for it. So if we come in there and say that, hey, this is perfect, we're good to go, and something happens, that's now our fault. Not your fault, not the home inspectors. It's a very simple. We've never had it happen luckily because our guys are really well trained. Uh, you talk about guarantees with buying a home they, the home warranties come up with that with me and that kind of stuff uh, and i'm not going to knock home warranties because that's not what we're here to do but at the same time uh, be very cautious about what home warranties you're getting and that peace of mind that you get because when your air conditioner breaks or something happens with it you can be eight to nine months out just to get a service call it's not 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 really good and they only fix it they don't replace it right. and it becomes really difficult work with the guys that are in the trades and the specific industry um, and make sure <laughs> it's done right. So yeah. we've come across that a hundred times. So. No, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, you just, you have to be smart, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and being proactive is always the best, the best thing to do. It's a huge um, investment. It's a oh huge yeah. Investment. Right, you said it, so. Now let me, let me switch gears a little bit and kind of go back on something Mike, you talked about earlier and that was uh, sump pumps. Sure. So sump pumps, now um, walk me through a little bit with these because I feel like with sump pumps, it's the thing that is really protecting you from a ton of potential damage, but people don't either make sure that they're done right or they don't have a backup or they don't know what a backup is. So tell me a little bit about what people need to know about sump pumps. Sump pumps, um, it, it, it's horsepower don't matter. It's the gallons per minute on a sump. Oh, okay. Having redundancy is the most important thing if you don't want to fall flood. Two, three stages of redundancy to your pumps is more protection than you have one pump, no backup because you're gambling, because it's not, if it's gonna fail, it's when it's gonna fail. Right. <laughs> so ha ha having multiple redundancies, I personally like having um, two primary pumps in that alternate, because when you have a regular sump pump in there, it just all operates all the time, and you have a battery backup that, a watchdog that everybody would call it. Mm -hmm. on, on the side, the watchdog don't operate or exercise or work. They're starting to come, increasingly getting better but they don't exercise themselves like they should you need to make sure that pump works monthly so that means the homeowner needs to go down check that pump okay it ran we're good check it every month with two primary pumps and you have an alternating control that all can be backed up to a battery backup system so you have your full capacity system being able to protect your house even when the power goes out for as long as it needs Okay. And then also the discharges. So you get the discharges going out, out of the house. Typically, most people have one pipe going up and out of their basement. Having multiple discharges in the winter when you have that freezing and thawing and that the discharges could freeze up on a primary one. If you have individual discharges for each pump, then you have that redundancy of backup. So this pump you can't pump, but this pump's going to be able to pump it out. So uh, we look at all that grading of the yard. 
how the water is getting to the house, you want to watch all of that stuff too. So now, and with those, typically, what's the lifespan of a sump pump? The pump itself is it's hard to say exactly. You're typically five to ten years, depending okay. on what kind of pump it is, what manufacturer it is, what what style, because they'll have. I don't want to get too technical. Uh, <laughs> they have multiple different styles where how much power it draws. The more power it draws, the harder that pump works, the shorter the life expectancy. Okay. Now, is there any kind of uh, rule of thumb or anything people can do to figure out, is there some pump maybe failing before their basement just floods? For a regular homeowner, um, not too much. Just okay. going down there, checking it, making sure it's running when there's a, a storm. Um, for uh, somebody that's trained, you can actually check the, the power consumption of that pump and mm. see if it's within range. And that will tell you, uh, you're right marginal, it's, you're going to have to replace it soon, it's over, overpowering, it's going to die very soon, or it's within range and you're good for another year or so. That's why maintenance is so important. Like if, if having a technician come out, a plumber come out once a year to go through that and we'll take those readings, we'll record those readings and be able to put those in our CRM system, how we manage our customers and be able to keep that up for you. So you don't have to worry about it. So for me as a homeowner personally, I just want stuff to work. I, yeah. I want maintenance to be set up so that I don't run into a basement that's failed. I don't come home from vacation and my water heater is leaking all over the place. And there's so many things that, number one, that we offer, but there's so much in the industry that's offered that a lot of people just don't know because they don't live in this world. You, you're just a homeowner, so you, and that's that's fine. That's what you're supposed to do. You pay your mortgage, and that's that's fine. <laughs> we'll take care of the rest, right? Right. So that the peace of mind part of living is the most important to me because I just don't want you to have to worry about it. We offer guarantees with our HVAC department and our electrical department and our plumbing department for certain different situations. But when you keep up on maintenance, there's a lot of perks where it just takes it off your plate, and we take the burden of making sure that that thing stays proper. And when you pick up the phone to call us, we answer every single day, 24 hours a day. We don't put you on hold unless we have like 50 people calling at once, but then we get right to you. But uh, at the end of the day, we have a live person. We don't have an answering service. We're 24 hours a day. We answer 24 hours a day. It's a live paid employee that actually works there. You'll get me sometimes. You're going to get Mike sometimes. Um, just how many people are on the phones for you know certain situations. Our customer's focused um, attitude is to make sure that we're there at your worst moment you call and your sub pump has failed and water spewing out and you're in the beginning stages of it and we can get out there that's that's exciting to me because we're stopping a an event in your home <laughs> you know? so, right yeah. that makes sense and um lots of good information thanks for coming out uh if you want to get in contact with them the information's below definitely get things checked out it's always better to be preventative than have to deal with the catastrophe that happens especially whether you're buying a new home or you already own that home, get it checked out, get the professionals out there to do it. That's going to be your best bet. So thanks for guys for stopping by. Um, and I really had a lot of fun. Awesome. I did too. Thank you for having us. No problem.